Hello, I'm Dr. William Lowry. I'm a practicing pulmonary physician in Alameda, California, and also a patient with LGMD1D and um, the chairman founder of the LGMD1D DNA JB6 Foundation. And I'm here to present a proposal um, to consolidate or coordinate several uh, disparate groups of autosomal dominant muscular dystrophies and X-linked muscular dystrophies, also known as uh, myopathies. And I'd like to share a PowerPoint. It would be called Myosend, short for Myopathy Syndicate, the umbrella for all muscular disorders, including muscular dystrophy. And it uh, would be a subsidiary under the LGMD1D DNA JB6 Foundation, um, a 501c3. Uh, this is our website, which has links to the uh, Myosend um, site, and I'll give the address later. The problem is that we have autosomal dominant and X-linked myopathies and muscular dystrophies um, that are rare and underrepresented. They're a hodgepodge group that are poorly organized. On the other hand, autosomal recessive muscular dystrophies and myopathies are more common, about 80% of all muscular dystrophies worldwide, and they're easier to treat with the current genetic therapies, and there's several um, genetic therapeutic companies that are already taking advantage of this. However, the advances in gene therapy for autosomal dominant X-linked muscular dystrophies are probably three to five years behind, according to academic and industry leaders. But there's an overwhelming list of academic and genetic industries vying for all patients, including um, our uh, rare conditions. So who are we? This is um, a reference uh, from Washington University's uh, neuromuscular division. Uh, they've listed, as you can see, the dominant muscular dystrophies here and myopathies. Now myopathies are a broad category of which muscular dystrophy actually shows muscle degeneration. You have recessive disorders here and the X-linked uh, limb girdle muscular dystrophies. Um, and of course Duchenne muscular dystrophy is already well organized and uh, we're not really including them in this potential uh, consortium or syndicate. And here's other inherited muscular disorders, dominant, recessive, some X-linked as well. And this list uh, continues to grow as we find um, more rare uh, groups of muscular dystrophies. Now this is a, a list from the UK of the uh, uh, pie chart of the different types of muscular dystrophy. I apologize for the blurriness. Uh, these slides were extracted. <clears throat> But you can see the alphabet soup of a number of different recessive, autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, and X-linked. And here's a, a yet another pie chart from the United Kingdom showing uh, quite a lot of these disorders. And then this is from Japan, and you can see the incidence. Let me close this out. Uh, uh, the different types, autosomal recessives being the most common. Um, it's designated by the two here, and one being autosomal dominant, 1A and 1B here. Uh, and again, this is the breakdown in Japan, but you can see the autosomal dominance and the excellent recessives are quite rare relative to the autosomal recessives here designated by the twos. Uh, and here's uh, yet another slide. Sorry, I, I went. Uh. So who are the genetic players? This is a slide, and I apologize for the blurriness. These are all the industries uh, around the world. Uh, the industries, uh, the private industries are in blue, the academic and the mixed are in gray. But you can see here, I, I lost count, but they're quite a lot. And you may recognize a lot of the names. And sorry and what are they looking for uh, and sorry about the blurred slide but you have monogenetic disorders here non-monogenetic disorders here that is multiple genes lead to this uh, uh, this disorder uh, but you can see here primary disorders of the muscle is a small part of this pie
And where are they? Again, I'm sorry for the um, blurriness here, but you can see that in the United States leads the list with 170 uh, adventures going on, either academic or private industry, and a smattering around the globe. So what's the answer? Um, if there's an alphabet soup of conditions and they're very rare, um, uh, how do we uh, proceed? Well, what's the future hold? And if you'll read along with me, we have to assume the future uh, is gene editing at the fundamental DNA level with ideally one intervention. Um, and um, this one intervention will lead to either complete or partial cure as opposed to multiple uh, interventions needed at the RNA level or protein molecular level to maintain a state of wellness. Unfortunately, at the molecular level, far removed from the DNA level, we're all vastly different in our conditions. That is, each genetic, genetic defect at the DNA level produces a different protein in a different condition, and each subgroup would have to have some sort of um, specific cure, uh, and again, that would just be uh, either luck or uh, you'd have the numbers like in Duchenne's muscular dystrophy that they could go in different directions. But for the rare disorders, uh, the uh, gene therapy would be uh, our common denominator and actually would be uh, more in line with a complete or partial cure. So if you assume number one in the list of industry interests would support this assumption, there's a lot of industry out there uh, looking at the DNA level then we all share uh, the same path forward. That is, once a vehicle is produced to uh, edit uh, the gene, and CRISPR is uh, one of those technologies, C-R-I-S-P-R, then essentially we are all driving a Volkswagen. That is, as the technology matures, these parts are interchangeable, and uh, you can go directly to the gene with the same sort of process so this is really our common denominator. Therefore, we need to organize, if we all share a common denominator from a genetic therapeutic standpoint, then we need to reach out to small groups and organize under one identifiable un umbrella group, and the industry will likely find us. So for us, I think the answer, um, I've put together this name, Myosin, for Myopathy Syndicate, would. Uh, we'd like to form an informal coalition or syndicate of patients, caregivers, and friends who support our disparate groups in need. And for established groups or foundations, uh, you would maintain your own database, uh, but you'd agree to be a part of the umbrella and be publicized as such. And again, safety in numbers. And of course, individuals would like to join, that would like to join Myosin, the data collected would be names, email, specific uh, condition or support function. That is, are you a friend or a caregiver or a spouse, um, uh, just to amplify our numbers. For example, if one person has a condition, then we'd expect the, to count the caregiver, children, and close friends as part of the organization if uh, they are so willing to participate. And again, it only makes sense because, you know, the FDA wants to know and other groups want to know, funding groups want to know how you, this condition affects the people around you and, and how do you live with this. And, of course, this affects, you know, everybody in your circle of friends and family and influence. And, of course, our numbers would grow and our, our, our influence would grow according, accordingly and of course all this data would be pre uh, protected and, and it's not tracked. Finally, what are we going to actually do with this? Um, you know, our future uh, numbers of established groups, foundations, and individuals will speak volumes when it comes to lobbying governments, specifically the FDA and industry. And, if we're organized, we can send unified emails, share Zoom meetings, sanction position statements, and likely improve the quality of each of our lives. And I don't really see a downside to this, and I think if we're well organized, history is on our side. So I'd like to finish with this, and uh, please contact us at www.lgmd1d.org with links to Myosin, and we'd like to help um, uh, grow. Uh, this umbrella organization and uh, thank you so much